Hi, sir. Can you tell me your name? Hello, I'm Curtis Claude. All right, so this is the People versus Curtis um, Clauden. Good afternoon, Your Honor. James Kuzicki on behalf of uh, Curtis Clauden. Wait the reading of the complaint, stand you. Uh, Your Honor, for the court's information, Mr. Uh, 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 Clauden indicated that he did not appear in court because around that time he had moved out of state, he moved to Illinois. He had another matter there. He reports that he was incarcerated um, there for a time, and he came back here to the Michigan area. Um, he is now gainfully employed. I don't believe he's a flight risk honor, even though this is an old case. I'm asking for a personal bond, and if necessary, a GPS tag. All right. Well, here's the problem with that. That. Uh, Here's the problem with that is Mr. Clauden was arraigned. I better than not guilty plea on his behalf, but here's the thing. He was arraigned on this and was in 20 and would have been given his court dates immediately. So it's not, you know, when, when it's this type of charge, it's, it's given to him on the record. So the fact that he chose to move out of state after he was advised that he had court dates and was in arraigned on a felony, quite frankly, would be considered absconding and um, a violation of his bond conditions. You can't leave the state when you're on bond. I assume I could, a matter of fact, I'm 99.99999% positive that that would have been, oh, look at this. You were arraigned on May 15th of 2020. You were not allowed to have any weapons. You were given a personal bond. Um, you were also told no leaving the state of Michigan while this case is pending. All right. Don't talk. Sorry. And then you failed to appear for that day. And then you failed to appear for your exam. And so the case has been pending. There were documents that were filed in 2022. These look like... So he was aware, so he violated bond, he, he absconded, and then he pre presumably had a case out of someplace else while he was gone. A lengthy history of assault crimes. Did you get a chance to see this? Right. Did you get a chance to see this? Do you know what this is, sir? That's your criminal record. It's it's like. Uh, All right, here we go, history. sir. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing can and will be used against you. You have the right to have a lawyer present during any future questioning and any future court hearings. If you cannot afford an attorney, the court will appoint one for you. You have two dates within the next 21 days. The first is your uh, probable cause conference, and that will occur on October 16th of 2023. The next date will be your preliminary exam. At your preliminary exam, the prosecutor must prove that it was crime, crime was committed and that there's probable cause to believe that you committed that crime. And that date will be in person at the 23rd District Court on October 23rd of 23. Based on the lengthy criminal history, the fact that the defendant has absconded, I understand this is not the most serious criminal offense out there. It does involve a weapon. He has prior convictions. He absconded from the court for three years. So I, a personal bond is out of the question. Because I, I don't know how else I can get him to court. I'll show up to court. I'll, 
my office, my uh, boss is a, is a police officer. I work for security. All right, no, Mr. Clauden, you had a chance. You're, it's a habitual third. These are just allegations, but this case has literally been hanging around since May of 2020 because you left and got when it, no. You should exercise your right to remain silent. You are not changing my mind, sir. You have a $10,000 cash or surety bond. You're to appear in court as directed. I'm going to say this real slow for you, Mr. Clauden. You can't leave the state without permission of the court. You're not to commit any crimes while released. You're to immediately notify the court of change of address or phone number. You can't possess or have access to firearms. And you have your dates. All right, we're all set. Thank you. Sir, is this uh, Matthew Hall? Yes, Your Honor. All right, this is uh, 221906 OT, uh, the people versus Matthew Hall, Mr. Kaziki. Yes, Your Honor. Good afternoon, James Kaziki on behalf of Matthew Hall. Wait, reading of the complaint, stand you. Uh, Younger, um, we're requesting a nominal bond in this matter. This is, uh, you failed to appeal for restitution. Uh, it wasn't aware of the date. All right, so I'm going to enter a not guilty plea on his behalf. Sir, it's for restitution. You've already been sentenced. I mean, you were literally sentenced to pay $150 total with the payment plan of $50 a month. I'm going to go ahead and just assume that yeah, no payments were ever made. Yeah, because uh, I, I don't know what payments to. Uh, in, in my via Zoom, before the court ended, it all went black. I got cut off, so I didn't really know what to do. Okay. Uh, I'm agreeing. I will pay it. Sir, sir. Did you go over your constitutional rights with your attorney listed in this advice of rights form? Yes, ma'am. Did you did you give your attorney permission to sign that? Yes, ma'am. And did you understand it? A little bit, not too much. I'm not very smart. All right, we'll read it all over again. Let me know if you have any questions. You have been brought to court on a misdemeanor or felony charge. All you're here on is you've already pled to the misdemeanor, sir. You were to appear at a restitution hearing and make payments. You were show cause and a warrant was issued because you failed to do both of those things. Um, I better not guilty plea on your behalf. You have the right to, well, at this point, you would have a right to a hearing on the, the, the violation. Um, you could call witnesses if you wanted. You could see in here and question all of the witnesses against you. You have a right to be a witness for yourself or to remain silent. And you also have a right to be presumed innocent. Honestly, sir, you owe the court $270 and you need to show up for the restitution hearing. That's really all you're here on. You've already Just pled. You've yes, already been sentenced. You weren't given any probation or anything like that. It was just paying fines and fees. So I granted the request for a court appointed attorney. He's got, sir, you've got an, a, a no bond warrant out of Wayne County. Yeah, I know that's why I'm here today, taking care of my uh, violation of probation. Do you know a real good way to take care of it is not when you're arrested on other cases and you're held on no bond and then you appear. I mean, like, that's the issue we're having. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, look, I'm going to set Judge Slavin's already set a bond on your case and I'm going to follow his his bond was twenty five hundred dollars. Ten percent. He knows more about your case than I do. So it's $2,500 bond, 10%. Um, the conditions of your bond are, you're to appear in court as directed, you're not to leave the state without permission of the court, you're not to commit any new crimes while released, you're to immediately notify the court of um, change of address or phone number. Do you understand all of that? Yes, Your Honor. 
Alright, hold on. Come on over. But she said hold on. One sec. I'm almost done. That's okay. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. We're all set. This is Johnny Ray Stanton Jr. Sir, can you tell me your name? Johnny Staten Jr. Okay, and this is 23-22360M. All right, sir, you're here today on an indecent exposure uh, matter. You had an opportunity to speak to an attorney and you denied that. Is that accurate? It mean to. I was under some alcohol this morning. Well, he just tried to talk to you like 10 minutes ago. Are you still under alcohol right now? Partially. Is there an officer near you? Yep, I'm right here, miss. Um, can you tell me when he was arrested? How long has he been in custody? Uh, he came in as, I want to say it was 9.35 last night at 10.04. So you're still drunk from 9.35 last night, sir? I didn't say I was drunk, Your Honor. Well, you said you're under the influence of alcohol. I can't arraign you if you don't know what's going on, sir. Do you understand never, that? I understand. It's been a rough night, and I was just woke up. All right. Well, if you need another night, we still have time. I'm willing to wait 24 hours to arraign you. You've got a no, you've got a no bond, full extradition hold out of Ohio, so you're not going anywhere. I got all the time in the world. I don't it would feel better being arraigned tomorrow when you understand what's going on. I'm cool with that. I've got no problem with that, sir. Officer. Yes. Um, the, the defendant is stating to me that he's inebriated. Um, he's got a full extradition hold. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere. Can we have him arraigned tomorrow? Uh, yeah, we can. All right. We'll see him tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you.